Strat. Les Paul. Dirty Amp. Clean Amp. Nine takes on the tone bender. Hey guys, welcome to that pedal show. Dan here. Mick here. Hello. I sounds... could have I could have kept going because it's awesome, but there's a lot to get through. That was epic. What a great sound. Really, really epic. Okay. Um, for those of you, there's a lot been a lot of people asking for this. We've got a buzz going on today, which is driving me nuts. So I'm going to try and ignore it. But um, the victory is cranked and it's gainy, so it's just noisy, unfortunately. Um. We did a video a few weeks back now, probably mm -hmm. months back now, in fact. In fact, it was one of the last videos we made just as lockdown was yeah. kind of grabbing hold, wasn't it? So yes. it would have been March, um, early March, where we took Josh Scott from JHS Pedals to Macari's in London. The to, Land of Dreams. The Land of Dreams, yeah, to play some vintage tone benders. And Macari's is important in the Tone Bender story. Why, Dan? Uh, because it was from Macari's uh, at the back where Gary Hurst was building and, you know, design and building the first Tone Benders. Yeah, it was kind of the product of the Macari family. Yeah, wasn't it? yeah. Um, and they had, they were just right there in the middle of everything in the mid 60s and 65 um, on the back of the Maestro FZ1 Fuzz Tone. Yes. So this is all history stuff, which you can look up on Wikipedia. Dan and I have talked about it a lot. But in 65, everything changed thanks to that Maestro pedal, mm -hmm. which was a super simple uh, transistor fuzz pedal, which mm -hmm. no one had heard yep. before. And all of a sudden, it ends up on a couple records. The world changes and everyone goes, wow, we need to make one of those. Yes. One of which was the tone bender that came out of uh, Charing Cross Road, you know, central London at that time, and just spawned a whole new world of guitar tone. Yeah, yeah. So we went to Macari's and we played a bunch of vintage ones, and so many of you said, great, but the vintage ones are unobtainium. Indeed. And the really best, the best of the clones are also crazy expensive. Yeah. Uh, from certain people. So what about modern tone bender variants? Um, in your opinion, you know, what would you look at? So mm. we've put these together. Yeah, yeah. So we've got nine uh, different pedals here. You would say heavily inspired by tone bender circuits. Some are almost, um, you know, like, not not clones, but it's taken different. Like the prosecutor, for example, is a um, a Mark II tone bender with a Mark III, um, okay, you know, tone control in it. So you know, but basically, tone bender variants. Yeah, and if you want to orientate yourself uh, as to tone bender variants, watch that previous show we did yeah, with, yeah. with Josh and Anthony Macari because that really sort of sets the scene. Mm. Um, yeah. So, what are our questions? Um, what do you want to know about a tone bender? You want to know what the fuzz sounds like. Mm -hmm. You want to know what it sounds like into a clean amp. Yes. Which is? Oh, we got yes, the the Tone King Imperial. Uh, yeah, Mark II, which is a new acquisition for us. We plugged it in this morning and went, hmm, I wonder if we could use this. Yes. Yeah. So awesome. that's set relatively clean. That's our clean amp. And we've got a Victory Sheriff 44 set to overdrive. Daniel, if you wouldn't mind demonstrating the two amplifiers today. Okay, All right. So here is the clean amp. Right. Mm. 
I just want to prove to you that it is kind of clean with the Strat. What a great sound. Yeah, it is overdriving just a touch up at the top end there, but yep. for that kind of take 65 Deluxe reverb as the, as the, as the point. So it's not clean, sterile, you know, crazy clean, but it is clean, cleanish. Sure. Because crazy clean, sterile with these pedals is yeah, you don't not want great. Yep. Uh, and the Sheriff, 20, uh, Sheriff 44. Sheriff 44. <laughs> Massive. Yeah, I may switch strats during this um, video because uh, there's no tone control on the bridge on this and okay. I might just need to roll a bit of that off. Anyway, um, so what we've got is a humbucker guitar, a single coil guitar, a dirty amp and a clean amp mm -hmm. in order to try and cover the, the big bases as it were. So what do we want to know? We want to know what the game character is like and how much there yep. is. Yep. We want to know if they clean up a little bit, tone benders aren't really known for cleaning up, but I think it's good to know. Mm -hmm. And crucially, the bass response. Yeah. Because um, one of the really great things about tone benders for a lot of people is they're not as woolly sounding as a fuzz face. Yeah. It's a very different thing. So And lots of lots of humbucker players prefer a tone bender style a fuzz. So I think those are the things we're gonna be listening yes. for. Yeah, for sure. Right then, Dan. Okay. Why have we chosen these pedals? Um, because they're awesome. Uh <laughs> So we've got builders and people that we know who make these, and they're just some really cool takes on that classic tone bender thing. So if we start, let's go right to left. So let's start with the freaking bender. The freaking bender, um, the, why this is a really good shout is because this is actually available at Macari's. Uh, David Ranger from Ranger FX uh, was selling pedals through Macari's for a long time. That always talked about doing a collaboration. Yeah. And so the freaking bender is, it's like a tone bender and his freaking fuzz in one pedal. Okay. So basically, if you turn the uh, the gain, the center knob, sort of down a bit. This one? Yep. Go so halfway. You go halfway. So anything, any, until it gets up to full, it's your basic, um, it's a tone bender circuit, like a tone bender, I think it's a Mark II. Until it gets up to full. Until it gets up to full. When it gets up to full, clicks over into the freaking bender fuzz. Yeah, well, you actually hear the click, it just... Oh, I see, there's yep. no click. Yeah, there's right. no click. Okay, so here's our, here's the freaking bender. Uh, let's go into the, let's try into the clean amp to start with. Sorry, I said Mark II, it's at least a Mark III because it's got a tone control on it. So, um, right, so that sort of big, uh, almost almost muffy type thing without the, that bottom end. But now if you turn the, the gain all the way up.
<laughs> just awesome. That's so cool. When you turn the volume down, yeah, the gate goes even crazier. Right. And you go, you can just like, so there's nothing. Right. There's a lot of hiss today and I'm going to tell Fraser not to cut too much of it out. Okay. But here we go. I'm a big fan of David Ranger. I think he has such a creative way of designing and you know, thinking about effects. And yeah. Are just yeah. So that I think that's killer. So super focused in the before the um, freak and fuzz is it called? Yes. The freak. So the freak and fuzz is yeah. Is so before the freak and fuzz bit. Yeah, it's basically it's like a Mark III tone bender. Pretty scoopy. Yeah. Uh, probably would sound great with the Jazz Master. I really should pick the Jazz Master up at some point during today's thing. Sure. And then after that, it's that cocked wah, super crazy focused in the mids. Yep. Crazy gated, you know. So David was saying that the original circuit that he designed, he's used on loads of records and stuff, and it always in the mix, he says it, it just, it's you can yeah, hear it yeah. no matter what else is in the mix, you can always yeah. hear the sound of that thing, which is great. It just sort of transports me straight to 70s, some of those 70s, maybe a bit Mick Ronson y. Sure. Yeah. Those kind of, yeah. those kind but of sounds. But Mick, Mick Ronson, his whole thing was a tone bender, you know? Uh, okay. So that sort of makes sense. I think I probably knew that somewhere in the back of my mind, but that's what it was making me yeah. think of. Yeah. All right, let's move on then. Uh, okay, so Pig Dog Prosecutor. Yeah. Um, I have to say, this is one of my faves. Uh, I'm a massive fan of pig dog pedals, um, Steve at pig dog, you know, as far as we're talking about before making clones, he's, he's arguably, well, he is one of the best. He makes your favorite first pedal of all, doesn't he? He, well, he makes a bunch of them. Yeah. yeah but the so, juju, but the Mark, juju, the, the, the Mark three juju yeah. is, is amazing. So basically this is the prosecutor. It's, it's a Mark two tone bender, but with the Mark three, um, Tone filter. control, the yep. filter. So if you turn the filter all the way to uh, to the left, so you, you get this, um, if you just, you know, so uh, there we go. So all the way to the left is like your Mark II circuit, but then that filter comes in and it's just... Off we go. Let's just uh, hear that through the Marshall, through the Mar uh, Victory. Thank you. 
tell you what's interesting. Mm. I'm massively preferring the sound of the victory. Right. Probably because it's on a 412 cab. Sure. And there's so much more bottom end. Sure. And maybe because I'm on axis with it. Right. What is also interesting, though, is given how much that victory is overdriving, which is quite a lot, mm. the fuzz doesn't seem yet, we haven't had anything yet that's totally caving in yeah. and losing definition, even into a crunchy amp. Yeah. And that's one of the, certainly with the, um, when you get to Mark threes and above and, and things with that filter, because of the way that those those mids are focused, it works really well. Yeah. And those, those you know, I think there, there are some sounds that we may struggle with a bit, but we'll see. But yeah, it's, you can see why, um, you know, guys, Les Paul's, Marshalls, when they play the fuzz face, it's like a you massive, know, big, fat, woolly thing. Plug one of those in. It's like, okay, I can make this work. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, you know so far, I think it, everything is suiting the, the Leicester a bit better. Sure. Feels right. like. Yeah, it. right, okay. I mean, this bridge, this is a original 61 Strat, so the um, bridge pickup is pretty wiry sounding. Sure. Uh, with no tone control on it, so right. But I think it's it's a good comparison. It sounds like ace. Um, okay, so let's go to uh, the creepy fingers. This is uh, the whole type fuzz. So Brad Davis uh, is actually the bass player from Fu Manchu, <laughs> and he started this company a few years ago. And it's really interesting. He's um, they're all handmade, point to point, uh, but they're not crazy expensive. Yeah. Um, but this is so. This is the take on a Mark One. Tone bender. Okay, great. With, that, that that was the biggest question from what we did, wasn't it? What the, when we came away from the Macari's day, I think we were all just preferring the Mark One over everything else. Sure. So yeah. what Mark Ones are there? And yes. this is a Mark One. So if this is yeah, this is a take on a Mark One, but again, it's got a filter control on. Yeah. Okay. Um, and it doesn't cave in the same way as a Mark One does. But uh, yeah, really, really cool sounding thing. So here we go. <laughs> So if you um, have a mess around with the filter control, let's go to the extremes. that kind of gated yeah broken thing you get right on the edge because sometimes a gated fuzz can sound just weird it can sound affecty yeah but that just it's r just right on the edge and yeah. you just get enough of it so one thing Brad, I mean, Brad the way he voices his things he's like super um, super detail yeah you know um, yeah really really cool sounding <laughs>
So instant gated fuzz just with the volume control. Love it. It's great, isn't really it? Really love really, that really, one. Really great. Really love that one. And it's not massive. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so the fuzz. Yeah. So Jesse Davey does uh, the mini fuzz. This is a GE. This is a Germanium one. Mm-hmm. And it's got three modes. One that... Uh, one that's sort of vintagey fuzz face, one that's modern fuzz face, I think. And the one in the middle is slightly more Zonk machine. Okay. Right. The Zonk machine is interesting. John Hornby Skews and Company um, was uh, a distributor and indeed a manufacturer, but predominantly a distributor that I didn't realise had been around this long. Yeah. So through my guitar yeah, yeah. magazine days, I knew I knew John actually. And um, oh wow. And the people that had work there down the years had some good friends at that at that company and they're still a massive distributor of um gear so they do everything from like the vintage guitar range right uh, they did dan electro for a long time they did dunlop for a long time they do loads of stuff like you know when you walked into your old school guitar shop and there was a load of stuff on the counter they probably did it right so they're a massive distributor in the uk and when rewinding back to the top of the show when that um fz1 hit mm. in 65 and as we said everyone said oh my god i need one of those jhs had um a designer i did write his name down actually i think it'd be worth mentioning his name his name was uh yes um I got this from Vintage Guitar Magazine. Oh, cool. Yeah, online. So uh, props to Michael Dregney, who wrote this article. But uh, anyway, the guy was called Charlie Ramskier. Wow. In Doncaster in 1965. No yeah, yeah, yeah. So they, they said, look, there's this new thing out. Go and make us one of those. So it was the circuit was very, very similar. Right. But it sounded different, apparently. And sure. I spoke to Dan Drive about this, who we'll come on to in a minute. And Dan said, of all the original zonks he's heard... They all sound quite different. Yeah. Unsurprisingly, they were germanium transistors. So it's fourteen pounds when it came out the Zonk machine oh, in '65, and then the year later they decided it was too expensive, so they brought out a silicon one, which was eight pounds. Right. Okay. Anyway, Doyle Bramall loves the Zonk machine, mm. and what characterises the Zonk machine is it was like a tone bender, but apparently it had a bit more thickness. Mm. But again, Dan says he's heard ones that sound thicker and ones that sound thinner. Right. Principally, what it had was a little bit of octave effect when you turn down. So okay. we were getting a tiny bit of that with the creepy fingers. Yeah, right. Just because of the way that three transistor design and according to some of the other values. Anyway, the Jesse Davey fuzz has a zonk mode in it. Zonk um, inspired by the tone bender. So it's a similar, very similar circuit, but just a kind of different world. Sure. And we've got two examples of that. Right. So let's have a, let's have a listen to the zonky, zonky mode in this then.
Wow. Would you mind just roll it, mind rolling your volume sure, down sure. a bit just to see? That's killer. That is killer. It's cool, isn't it? That's really um, great. For those of you that don't know, uh, if the fuzz pedal's got a bias control on it, it's it's controlling the voltage to the transistors. Mm -hmm. So um, if the, it's not getting enough, it just won't work, and it gates, and it stops. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Which yeah, is what, so what you're hearing there. So not enough's getting through, so the signal's not getting through. And that point where it kind of turns on and off, or at least it lets a little bit through, is that really broken? Such a cool sound. It's brilliant. Yeah, it's great. All right, so continuing, the, um, I said Jesse Davey. The brand is actually called King Tone, um, and it's uh, the guy who builds them is a guy called Jesse Davey, who's uh, an old mucker of these shores who now lives in the US. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Awesome dude. Uh, talking of awesome dudes, Dan Drive, Dan Kerner, over there in Bremen in Germany. He's been around a little while, but is gaining more and more and more sort of of that boutique pedal hubris that okay. happens right. in our market. And he makes a lot of really nice things. And this is his take on the Zonk machine, the secret machine, which we I think we featured a couple times before. Mm. Um, same controls, so fuzz level and the bias control. And then I think you said the other control is for mids. Uh, you, you said it was for mids, didn't you? Yeah, I always yeah. get control. If it's not labelled, I get confused because I can't remember things. Sure. But it changes the mid range response. Uh, have a go on this one then, Dan. Okay. <laughs> Uh, 
far out, man. I actually prefer the sound of that into the dirty amp. Yeah. It, for some reason, it, it cut through the the limiting in, in that, whereas it sounded, it sounded great into the clean amp, but I don't know, just into that was yeah, magic. Yeah, I'm not sure I played it into the clean amp, did I? Maybe? <laughs> some reason the end of, just into the dirty amp it's magic just opens right out doesn't yeah. it yeah well obviously we've done this deliberately today a clean amp and a dirty amp so that you get an idea depending on what you like to do yeah most of these to me are coming alive into the amp that's dirty and what's interesting about that is that if this was a fuzz face maybe even a muff you'd lose so much of that definition because of so much of bottom end. Yeah, right. One thing I think the two zonky flavoured ones have done is they've shelved a bit of bottom end from the tone bender top. Right. Um, and that's why Doyle Brammel in particular, who I love, by the way. Um, oh, really? With all You've my heart. You've never mentioned him before. Yeah, I, I love Doyle Brammel. Um, I think one of the reasons he likes it is because it just gives that real mid-focus thing. Right. And I think his zonk has even more of that um, Octavi, Octavi flavour, his okay. original Zonk. Um, he does use an, an octave pedal as well, by the way, but it has more of that octave flavour. Okay, cool. Really cool. Awesome. Okay, so moving on, uh, this is the uh, Royal Tone by BAE. Uh, BAE Audio? Yeah. I, um, I forget what it stands for. I think it's British Audio Engineering or something like that okay. in the US. And um, there's oh, a fly. fly. Yeah. A real British farm fly. Sorry, we, we, we're on a farm, so there are flies, which is horrible, but it's true. Um, he has good taste, that fly. <laughs> <laughs> and BAE, not to be confused with the people who make weapons, BAE Systems, that's a completely different company, which your favourite cabin minister is probably on the board of. But anyway, um, not to be confused with them, they make really lovely, like, Neve style preamps, yes. and stuff, studio stuff, really cracking high end yep. audio grade stuff. Yeah, um, and this is uh, was being touted around by Robbie Robertson. Oh, okay. He of the band fame. As well, his I first fuzz. I first heard a BAE fuzz when I put together a board um, for Graham Coxon. Graham Coxon. Not anyone for ages. No, I think the horn might have died. Oh, really? I think it might have gone away. I think it might not be, be a TPS a whole, thing anymore. There'll be a whole bunch of people having mini celebrations, personal high fives. Yeah. Um, because of that. Because if, of that, if yeah. If the horn is gone. So let us know if you want the horn to go away or be re resurgent. Yeah. Um, okay. So this is the Royal Tone. Two foot switches on it. So I'll turn this one off first. So you've got on one side, you've got your... Uh, they, they call it a British three transistor fuzz. Yeah. All right. So if you have schwangage of this one. Oh, that's great. Yeah. But now <laughs> we gotta kick on the um, the EQ side. Cool.
Isn't that great? Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, this, uh, what I really like about it, the it's not like just an EQ thing that you it, it works with the fuzz. Yeah. And works with all the, the elements within the fuzz. It's just it's magic. Yeah. And you had the bass all the way off there. Yeah. So unlike some of these other ones, that's not cutting a lot of bass. No. Just turn the bass up a sec, can you? Yeah. like about that is that some of these others are just so fuzzy sounding you have to kind of approach it with a fuzz mindset sure that's like a really really great distortion yeah as well yeah totally very uh, nice awesome okay all right uh union tube and transistor yeah uh from vancouver i think aren't they canada yes east yeah. vancouver indeed yeah. yeah yeah um we like canadians we do we do um so these guys in Canada, what I love about these, most of the Union tube and transistor pedals are available in the um, custom version, which includes a laser etched name badge. Okay. A uh, fancy ass paint job, I think, and a nice wooden box and a bandana. Right. Or you can get the bean counter version, <laughs> which is a, like a silk screen printed on logo, um, which isn't quite so fancy. No box and none of the other accoutrement. So they actually call it the bean counter version. Yeah. That's brilliant. For less money. I love that's that. fantastic. Um, anyone that's ever dealt with a costings department, you'll know what we mean. Um, this is based... So this is the Tor Bender. Mm -hmm. And it's based on a pedal they do called the Sohn Bender. So the clue is in the name, I think. Right. The Sohn Bender is a quite expensive, like $450 germanium transistor okay. version of the Mark I uh, with a bit more and that's designed to clean up a bit. Okay. So it's a really interesting prospect. This is the silicon version thereof. Okay. And just as when uh, Mr. Skews and Co. debuted their Zonk machine in 1965 and they made the germanium one 15 pounds and the silicon one 8 pounds, so this is less, is about half the price. Oh, okay. Of the germanium one, which just presumably just reflects the difficulty of sourcing testing oh man germanium transistors many yeah. of which are just aren't available anymore yep totally so okay you're, you're finding old crap to pull them out of basically aren't you so if you have some chômage okay too much history dan no, no it's too all good. much history <laughs>
Am I detecting quite a lot more high end response? Yeah, feels like it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> So, I think we have a Incredibly, we have a cleanup winner. We have a cleanup winner. That was with, and even with the humbuckers volume control, that is amazing. There was a really beautiful sound there. Just as is, as can often be the case with Les Pauls, when you've got a bit of gain on, you just knock off the volume a little bit, and it just gets really what a fantastic sound that was. Wow. I really like that. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely I can't beautiful. work out if it was maybe a little bit too toppy with the Strat. <laughs> It retains so much strattiness, it's unreal. Yeah. So where a lot of these others really mask, I mean, not in a bad way, but they, they really stamp their... Sonic it becomes about the, the fuzz. All over yeah, it. Yeah, this yeah. still sounds like a strat with that on, doesn't it? <laughs> Incredible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. To the Bender, based on Josh's Mark III, but it also has uh, a JHS secret preset thing on the side. So, yeah, which is either more or less mid, isn't it? Yeah. As I remember. Yeah, so here you go. Okay. <laughs>
Again, this one is retaining a huge amount of top end. Yeah. Yeah. Cleaning up really nicely. <laughs> Another clean up. Did you go down to E flat then on the bottom string? Yes. <laughs> I was waiting for it to go all the way down to D and I was like, oh no, he's just going to E flat there. Yes, cleans up, much more high frequency response. Um, more brittle sounding overall. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, definitely does the clean up thing. When you went to the, there was, I thought you turned the pedal off at one point, you just turned the volume down. Hmm. And it didn't do that sort of gated, spitty, yeah, right, nasty thing. It just sounded like a really great distortion. Yeah, like a really great overdrive pedal. I there. think one that's one thing that Josh says about his um, his Mark III is that it is like an amazing distortion. Yeah, you know. Yeah, very cool. Very, very cool. nice. Very nice. Right. Finally, um, we have the Black Hat sound. Um, from our mate Marcus over at Reeves Electro. Yep, we've done this in a show fairly recently where we did uh, five makers you should know about and we included Marcus in that because uh, the way he builds pedals is truly extraordinary. They're all point-to-point, hand-wired inside, no circuit board. 
Yeah, like literally no circuit board. Yeah, yeah. I don't Unreal. know. Unreal. Perhaps he will make circuit board pedals at some point and he might already be doing so, but these ones... Point Outrageous. Point. Yeah, really crazy. Really, really crazy way of making pedals in an entirely brilliant way. Um, so this is... Uh, he does a pedal called the 108 Sound, which is, um, as the name implies, uses BC-108 silicon transistors, yep. I guess, mm. to sound a little bit like a Mark One tone bender, but um, with a bit more. Seems to be a theme. Mm -hmm. The Black Hat one is some special transistors uh, based on that. This is like a special edition of it. I had to write it down because I'll never remember. Um, TO-106 TUN Black Hat transistors. Okay. T-U-N. Um, NOS from the 1970s. Right. So, yeah. So, so it's based around a Mark One type tone with a... Yeah. With a bit more. With a bit more. Apparently so. Come on then, Dan. You were... You were rocking out so uh continue okay <laughs>
sounds like a really old AM radio. Yeah, yeah. The so, most fuzz face like of all of them. Right. Because you get all that bottom end back in. Okay. Uh, I think that's what the switch does, doesn't it? Yeah. Changes the bottom end response. Yeah. Blooming great, though. Tell you what, under the fingers. Ooh. Mm. Yeah, they feel great, don't they? Yeah. His pedals. They've all got that thing. There's a feel to them. Man, they're really amazing. Well, that was so much fun. Yeah, so what this video wasn't, which we should have said at the top, was, you know, like straight Mark I clones. Well, they're, they're different takes. Yeah on everything that that circuit inspired. Yep. And, you know, it's gone off in different directions and what you might consider, you know, improvements. And, for example, some of them are designed to clean up a bit better. Some mm -hmm. of them designed to be sort of more tonally focused. Some have more gain. That seems to be a theme. Some just sound like the world is coming to an end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, just all right, wonderful. Then. So, what one, What you got to pick one. Oh, Which one are you man. picking? Boy, oh boy. Let's make it easier. Best for cleanup. The union. Union, yeah. Um, filthiest, massivest fuzz. Probably the filthiest for me is the black hat. Yeah. But this, like the, <sighs> there's that sound of the freaking bender. Yeah. That I. Like, you can't get from anything else. That's going to be my next question. Most focusy, yeah. mid rangey cock to wah sound. Yeah, freaking bender. But then, I mean, they've all got... What I love about these is you can hear the personality of the builder yeah. in them, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. I think also pretty interesting was how they differed into the clean and dirty amps. Yes. Like so the, some preferred them, seem to prefer the, the sort of more breaking up victory and some seem to prefer the, the tone king. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's fascinating. Which, like, you know, let, let's, we should have said this at the top, but we're talking Marshall and Fender, right? Is what we're talking yeah, about. Really. Yeah. 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 Oh, just, just awesome. I mean, I'll have a lot of them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Magic. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm, the secret machine is probably going on my board. Uh, yeah. Right. Because I love Dan as much as anything. Yeah. I love you, Dan, as well, but... I love you, too. that, yeah. Dan, as well. Um, the Union, I could definitely use. The ones with too much bottom end, I wouldn't necessarily go for, because sure. from a personal perspective, that's what I want a fuzz face to do. Yeah, right. So I like the ones that keep that mid-range and, and lop off a lot of the bottom end. Sure. See, I've been, I've been recording with the prosecutor, and yeah. that filter control on it is... I mean, hearing that in the track... Yeah, yeah. ...is magic. Um, but I, the way the creepy fingers feels, you're going to say I was super impressed with that. So so great. Yeah, um, yeah. presumably that's all like modern hand wired. It, it's it's yeah. Well, it's all, all hand wired. All you know. Yeah, yeah. You know, it, he doesn't. He really doesn't properly. Contentious statement. I, I. To me, that's the difference between either point to point wiring the way that uh, Marcus does it, mm. or just really nice hand wiring. I.e., not. Um, modern surface mount yeah through, I, just, so, I just think that I can feel it I'm, sure. I think I can feel it well you can th there's one thing that we've noticed with the um, the Reeves Electro stuff is there's a feel about them yeah it's pretty amazing actually yeah. but yeah well, I just you know so so cool so it's such a it's such a unique fuzz sound I mean the, the tone bender you know because mostly when we talk about fuzz, most guys are talking about fuzz faces, you yeah. know. But then when you start looking at the tone banner, this, and then you have all of this creativity that's gone into that side of fuzz things. Yeah. I just love it. It's wonderful. Which one do you think? Because when we did the fuzz show down there at Macari's with Josh, mm. the Mark I, to me, just stood apart from all of them. Yeah. It was like, it was fuzzy, but it was also a great, great, great distortion pedal. Yeah, um, sure. For those of you who maybe don't love the kind of woolier, thicker, breaking end of fuzz. Hmm. Which do you think is was the most Mark One-y? Or that Mark One-y that we played that day? I'd probably got to go Creepy Fingers. Yeah, I was going to say Union or Creepy Fingers. Yeah. The the Union, um, I think, because the Mark One doesn't clean up. Yeah. You know all. what I mean? Whereas the Union... Does and that gives it a different vibe, yeah. but it's it's sort of sits in that area. But for me, the, the creepy fingers you could get it in that Mark One area. And I think what we said about that kind of almost gated, really crunchy thing right on the edge of the note. Yeah, that's what that's what stood the Mark One apart sure. from the twos and the threes and the fours for me. Yeah, ex exactly. 
And when you when you think about the way you set that, now think about the Zonk machine, you put it on that edge and then you have the octave come in yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. Just awesome. So great. Wow. Uh, for those of you who have sat through this and don't like fuzz, that would have literally been like sticking pens in your eyes. Uh, but, but we appreciate that you did it anyway. Yeah. And for those of you who do like fuzz, hopefully you've um, you've kind of heard some flavours and found a new rabbit hole to go looking down or at least made a decision on something. Um, yeah. yeah. Star performer for me all round, the Jesse Davey mini fuzz. Right. Because not only does it do that, but it does other stuff as well. Yeah. And it's tiny. Yeah, it's, it's great. Look it's at so that. Cool. How much real estate is that? Yeah, but it's, I mean, <laughs> put that in your board. It's like, yeah, I have this and everything else, but I have this. I love it. It's great. <laughs> Brilliant, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Um, a massive thank you to our patrons on Patreon. Uh, and also a massive thank you to our preferred retailers uh, in the UK and Europe. We have uh, Andertons of Guildford in Surrey. And we have our friends in Australia. Would be Pedal Empire of Brisbane, Queensland. And also there are links in the description. There are. Click the thing down, click the description box down. And if you click on those links and buy stuff, Dan and I can buy a new Rolls Royce. That'd be great. Maybe not new. Maybe part exchange. Ma yeah, from... maybe a 1974 one that's been go. crashed into a swimming pool. But not that one. <laughs> Um, okay, also a massive thank you to everyone that's gone to thatpedalshowstore.com and grabbed various accoutrements, including our new t-shirts. Yes, new t-shirts. Um, of course, if you've been watching this today, you need, and all you need is fuzz, fuzz is all you need t-shirt. Yep. And the new summer edition uh, Tritone there. Tri Tritone, yeah, yeah, very good. Yeah. What did you say that is? It's the Root and the Flat 5? The Root and Flat 5 is Tritone. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, is that The Simpsons? Yeah, it's, yeah. Okay, right, sorry. Um, okay, well, where to get to? No idea. Anyway, thank you for watching. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Have a fantastic week and we'll see you soon. Cheerio. Cheers, guys. Bye.